Lewis and Clark headed on their famous expedition across North America, in part to look for the Northwest Passage, a legendary water route people thought would allow boats to travel across the continent from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. They found no water route, and said they crossed the Rockies at Lemhi Pass in Idaho and Montana. On the other side of the mountains, water flowed in the opposite direction, to the Pacific. This would not surprise any of us today, but Lewis and Clark and most early Americans had little knowledge of the geography of what is now the western US. For example, due to Baja California being a peninsula, many people thought for hundreds of years that all of California was a gigantic island, and were shocked to realize that it wasn't. And while there certainly was no water route that bisects the Rockies and leads from the Atlantic to the Pacific that boats could take, you'd probably be surprised to learn that not too far from where Lewis and Clark crossed the Rockies, there is a place where water crosses the Continental Divide. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting, I'm your host Carter. Today, the creek that flows to two oceans. The Continental Divide begins on Alaska's Seward Peninsula and follows a succession of mountain ranges south, including the Rockies and the Andes, that divide the Pacific from the Arctic and later Atlantic Oceans all the way to Tierra del Fuego in Argentina. On every continent, island, and landmass, these divides exist, spots where rain falls that will either flow towards one body of water or the other. But across these continental divides, there are some anomalies. In the Bridger Teton National Forest of Wyoming sits one of the most prominent of these anomalies. Two Ocean Creek seems like a normal mountain stream. It starts high up in the mountains of Wyoming, fed by snowmelt, it makes its way down a canyon where, just over two miles from its source, it reaches a mountain pass. Conventional wisdom states that water flows down the path of least resistance, and this is true, but at this mountain pass called Two Ocean Pass, the creek meets two paths of least resistance at the same time. This is far from unusual, it's one of the reasons rivers are filled with islands, but Two Ocean Pass is different, it sits right on the continental divide. Before this point, the creek has flown down a canyon that sat directly on the divide. When it meets the pass, the gradual difference in elevation between it on either side causes the creek to split, at a spot known as the parting of the waters. Unlike most other creeks and rivers that split, because Two Ocean Creek splits right over the continental divide, its waters never meet up again. If you stand at the spot where the creek splits, looking downhill, the branch to your left is called Atlantic Creek. The branch to your right, Pacific Creek, each named for the ocean where their water eventually makes its way. Atlantic Creek makes its way down the pass to a larger valley, where it flows into the early reaches of the Yellowstone River. The Yellowstone River then forms the large Yellowstone Lake, flows through Yellowstone National Park, and into Montana. It crosses the entire state, with Montana's largest city, Billings, sitting alongside it, and then into North Dakota. Soon after crossing into North Dakota, it meets up with the Missouri River. Its waters continue as part of the Missouri. The Missouri goes south through North Dakota, going through its capital, Bismarck, South Dakota going through its capital, Pier, and then through Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, and Missouri, going through cities like Sioux City, Omaha, Kansas City, and Jefferson City. In the suburbs of St. Louis, it flows into the Mississippi River. From there, the Mississippi, the largest river in the country, forms the border of many other states, including Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. The waters that flowed into Atlantic Creek pass through St. Louis, Memphis, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans. Further downstream, south of New Orleans, it meets the Atlantic in a large swampy delta. Meanwhile, Pacific Creek flows west, in the opposite direction down the other side of the pass, until it meets the Snake River, just after the river has left Jackson Lake. The snake flows through the mountains west into Idaho, where it makes its way into the wide Snake River Plain. This plain is the only major area of flat land in the state, and as such is Idaho's center of population. Cities like Idaho Falls and Twin Falls sit along the Snake River, and Boise is not too far away. It then goes through Oregon, forming Hell's Canyon, the deepest canyon on the continent, even deeper than the Grand Canyon, and Washington, where it meets the Columbia River. The Columbia forms the Oregon-Washington border, flowing west through the city of Portland, eventually meeting the Pacific at Astoria. Though it's far from a navigable water passage, a fish could theoretically swim this route, going from Astoria to New Orleans, Pacific to Atlantic, through the Rockies in the Midwest. 
A similar phenomenon exists just 38 miles away, also in Wyoming, at Isa Lake in Yellowstone National Park. It sits on a pass along a highway and follows a very similar route to Two Ocean Creek, with its waters going to the Lewis and Firehole Rivers before the stake in Yellowstone. Isa Lake is one of the only natural lakes on Earth that goes into two different oceans, along with Wollaston Lake in Saskatchewan, whose waters flow into both the Arctic and the Atlantic. But there are a number of other lakes called bifurcation lakes, whose water flows into two different rivers that meet the ocean in different places. In addition, there are a number of endorheic basins along the Continental Divide, places where the divide splits and then rejoins, so the water that falls within it has no path to flow to any ocean and can only leave through evaporation. The most prominent of these in the United States is also in Wyoming, called the Great Divide Basin. It takes up 4% of the entire state, sitting in the Red Desert in the south of Wyoming and stretching for almost 90 miles. The Great Divide Basin is pretty dry and desolate. If you've driven the I-80 through Wyoming, you go right through it. Only a few hundred people live in the basin, and while there are other far larger endorheic basins in the US and the world, such as the massive Great Basin, which stretches through Oregon, California, Nevada, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, and parts of Mexico, the Great Divide Basin is interesting in that it represents a spot where the Continental Divide splits and then later reconnects, almost an island in the massive divide. The Continental Divide is a fascinating geographic feature, and along it sit a number of interesting anomalies. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's already joined my Patreon. Through it, you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad-free content, and shoutouts in my videos. Please be sure to check out the TII store where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official That Is Interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks, laptop stickers and sleeves, and so on. I really appreciate the well over 500 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations with the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information and suggestions for future videos. It's a great community, and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.